special day is because today is our fall 2023 share And so we are going to be raising money to keep Catholic radio waves flowing through your na- neighborhood. And I think that's pretty special. Yeah, I think so, too. It's, uh, you know, I know that uh, Catholic radio has a really special influence on so many souls. And we know this because we get so many calls in, we get so many testimonials, and they're always, uh, the trend is always, Catholic radio has really helped me. It's helped me understand my faith. It's helped me grow in my faith. It's been there for me at a very difficult moment in my life. So Catholic radio has this very powerful uh, medium to uh, to reach people where they're at and bring them into the fold of the Catholic Church, the one true faith. Please consider uh, w- uh, doing a maybe calling in with a pledge today to support your local Catholic radio station because we're not uh, we're not going to be here without your help. We're a hundred percent listener funded, and the the dioceses aren't paying for us to to stay on the air. So it's got to come from you, dear listener. If Catholic Drive Time is an important show for you, please consider calling in today. There you go. We'll be on at 9 a.m. Central, but we will take calls starting at 7 a.m. Central all the way through to the end of the day. So make sure you do that. Or go to grnonline.com, grnonline.com. Now, what, which one, the other one you want to know? Okay, you, tell me three. now. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's bookmark it. Let's go to n- number one. Okay, number one. The number one reason why today is special is because today's the Feast of Exaltation of the Holy Cross. Let's go. We talked about it yesterday, but it's actually today. The Feast of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross. So a glorious thing to meditate upon today is that Holy Cross being lifted up. I think that's an excellent thing. Now, I guess the process of elimination, there's only one other reason why it's special. There's the number two reason. And that reason is because joining us right now is Alan Smith with Bishop Sheen today. Good morning to you, Alan. Uh, good morning. <laughs> I don't know how I, you know, can uh, top that. That was a great intro. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's amazing. But at least I'm number two on the list. That's okay. But again, the cross is everything. You know, we need to preach Christ and Him crucified and uh, the power of the cross. It's unbelievable. It is a great feast day today. One of my favorite feast days because today is my wedding anniversary. Hey! Wow. Congratulations. Congrats. Yeah. Uh, 38 years, 38 wow. years with uh, my beloved Paisley, because uh, wow. okay, she has a, a name. Her name is Isabel, and uh, I'll make a coffee a little bit later this morning, and we'll enjoy the day. But uh, we chose that day to be married on the Feast of the Triumph of the Cross, because we wanted to, of course, have the cross as uh, our beacon of light, um, again, our strength. And so, uh, and of course, here I am all these years later preaching on the cross, uh, because Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen uh, really preached the cross, and especially the seven last words. And so uh, he would encourage us to put a crucifix on our desk, uh, put one in our pocket, uh, always have a crucifix close by so that we can see that great love story that God laid down his life for us uh, to uh, get us to heaven. So uh, thanks be to God. That's really awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, I was thinking... And I, I kind of want to talk about your uh, your wedding anniversary, but the one thing I was thinking about Exaltation of the Holy Cross and Fulton Sheen was the story about Fulton Sheen going out to the missions in Africa and what happened to him when he was giving the crosses out there. Can you tell me that story? Yes, he was uh, visiting a leper colony, and uh, there was 500 lepers uh, that he was going to visit. And, uh, of course, uh, Fulton Sheen loved to give away tiny little crucifixes. Uh, It was kind of his calling card. And so he went to the leper colony, and he had the crucifixes. And, of course, he wanted to gift them to the the, the lepers. And the first leper came up to him and stuck out his hand. And his hand had, of course, deteriorated because of the disease. And uh, Fulton Sheen, of course, being afraid of catching leprosy or uh, just even the sight of this, uh, you know, gruesome hand, uh, he uh, dropped the crucifix on his hand, thinking it would fall into his hand and he wouldn't have to touch the uh, the leper. But as uh, fate would have it or providence, uh, the crucifix fell to the ground and Fulton Sheen picked up that crucifix and then put it into the palm of the hand of the leper. And uh, Fulton Sheen said, you know, at that moment, there wasn't 500 lepers, but 501. 
Uh, he became like them so he could identify with them. And he gave out those other 500 uh, crucifixes to the lepers that were there. And of course, a uh, very humbling uh, moment for Fulton Sheen, but still uh, that vulnerability paid off big dividends uh, because again, it just helped him to not be afraid and to trust in the Lord and continue to preach the message of the cross. And uh, adversity comes with that cross. And uh, again, those uh, the environment he was in that day, uh, again, taught him a valuable lesson. So uh, praise be to God, but that's the story. Wow. You know, it makes me think saints are not born, they're made. Sometimes, you know, we have these these moments in our lives where even people who I believe are, are great saints have moments where they become greater. They have uh, they go from from the good to the better. And he's out there giving out crosses and to lepers and which is a good thing. But he recognized, man, I am I am a horrible person because I don't want to touch their hands. And I'm like, I'm thinking I wouldn't even travel over to a leper colony. <laughs> and, but, he, but he goes and he goes from the better. He goes to the good to the better and is willing to press those crosses into the hands of a leper. Uh, what a what a very beautiful thing. And what an example for us and our daily lives. I mean, how many times are we in situations where we kind of just don't like to do things that are icky, uh, that make make us feel uncomfortable? And what a lesson to take the Holy Cross and whether it be an actual physical cross or an action or an act of charity and do something that makes us uncomfortable. Uh, what do you think about that, Alan? Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, we talk about being uncomfortable and uh, we're talking about, you know, wearing signs of our faith, scapulars, miraculous medals, uh, crucifixes. Um, many of us are afraid to wear a crucifix, um, around our neck anymore um because it will identify us with christ and it's amazing how uh you know we kind of wonder where all the crucifixes have gone um again we've put them away and it's very sad but true and so it's this challenge that fulton sheen would give uh of course putting crucifixes into people's hands uh you know giving them this little memento but a memento that he hopes would uh, pay, bi pay big dividends uh, but it's that whole idea that we're ashamed of him um, you know I people who know me know that I'm a plumber by trade and I'm in a lot of houses and sometimes the uh, gut-wrenching moment in my day is when I go to the basement and I see these beautiful crucifixes these beautiful pictures of the sacred heart of Jesus in the basement by the furnace room and I go upstairs and I say to the customer, that's a beautiful picture of the Sacred Heart of Jesus you have, or a beautiful crucifix. Why don't you have them up in your living room and as a focal piece, uh, you know, in your home? And they always say, well, what will the neighbors think? Hmm. <laughs> I'm a, a little bit embarrassed. Well, again, that scripture that's very sobering is... Uh, Again, if we deny the Lord here, he will deny us later. You know, I'm paraphrasing here, but I think many people know what I'm talking about. But it's this idea of we need to put the crucifix back in our life. And Fulton Sheen gave the three-day challenge. He'd say, I challenge everyone to put a crucifix on your desk for three days, and it will change you. It will change you. The more you look upon the crucifix, the more you will realize that your sin put the Lord on the cross and that he loves you and that he would die for you again today if he was here. So uh, again, that three-day challenge to put the cross on your desk or your nightstand, but put it in your pocket, especially carry one of those small little crucifixes. And it's amazing what uh, that gentle reminder will happen every time you get your wallet or some change or your car keys, uh, you'll have an encounter with the crucifix. So um, let us not be ashamed of the cross. It's the price that our Lord paid for our redemption. Let us be proud of it and and share it with the world. Now, that makes me think, Alan, because the Fulton Sheen's focus on the cross, I mean, that was his probably most, most famous sermons were on the seven last words, which, I mean, we think about the seven last words, and we kind of separate it from the fact that he was nailed to the cross as he's uttering those things that he is currently he was currently dying on the cross suffering in a most excruciating literally excruciating pain as he's uttering those words and that was a huge focus in Fulton Sheen's life 
Uh, tell me about this. And are, are you are giving some talks on this uh, sometime soon. Can people attend those? Right. Yeah, I'm giving a three-day parish mission in Hastings, Ontario. Uh, it's close to Peterborough. That's always people say, what's the big city uh, close by? And uh, I give three talks. Uh, the first talk is uh, Lord, show us thy face and we shall be saved, uh, where I talk about uh, where's the crucifix in our life, where are the holy face of Jesus pictures. I mean, we've taken them down. Uh, yet these are beautiful reminders for us to uh, encounter Christ. Um, we have pictures of our children, grandchildren, our spouses. Uh, why don't we have a picture of Jesus in our mm. in our lives? And so that first talk about Lord, show us thy face. Um, I give another talk on the Blessed Virgin Mary. It's simply behold your mother. Uh, it's just a 45 minute talk on Sheen's writings on Our Lady. And the third talk to close out the mission is Lord, teach us to pray where I take uh, Fulton Sheen's writings on the Mass, the Our Father, the Holy Hour, um, and of course share that with uh, those who attend the uh, mission. So uh, again, kind of everything Fulton Sheen in a two or three day mission, those three powerful talks, that's what uh, the Lord has me doing this weekend. So I'd ask you to pray for me. It's always a, a beautiful opportunity to share the gospel uh, in a way and share the holy face. We uh, give out beautiful prayer cards and uh, mementos to those uh, who attend, and uh, we want everyone to have devotion to the Holy Face, to Our Lady, and to our Blessed Lord, especially uh, in that beautiful presentation of Christ and Him crucified. So uh, let us go out and preach that to the nations. Amen. Amen. Now, we have about just one minute left with you. Uh, before we go, uh, where can people get connected with you? Where can people find out more information about Bishop Sheen? Yeah, my website, uh, simply, it's called bishopsheentoday.com, because we, we need Bishop Sheen today. It was an easy website to name, uh, bishopsheentoday.com, and uh, there you'll find me. There's a contact uh, section, but uh, really, again, what people love is watching the old videos, uh, listening to the audio recordings, and of course, uh, shopping for uh, many of the books that he penned, uh, 66 of them in total. Uh, we've republished 35 of them at Bishop Sheen Today Publishing. So uh, there's always something for everyone, either watching Sheen, listening to Sheen, or reading Sheen. You can find it all on bishopsheentoday.com. 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 Thank you very much to Alan Smith. Good. God bless you and God love you. Thank you, Adrian. God love you, too. And happy anniversary. We'll be praying for you and your wife today. And that's going to do it for now. We're going to come back. Steve Ray, we're going to talk about Genesis coming up next. We'll be right back. Hello, this is Steve Gleason with your one-minute tool for Catholic evangelism. Here's the question for your non-Catholic friend. If Jesus brought two of the greatest Old Testament saints to meet with three of the greatest New Testament saints at the Mount of Transfiguration, can you say with any assurance that they were not alive, aware, and able to communicate? So here's your three best friendship tools for Catholic evangelism. Number one, the Bible. Luke 9 says, quote, Two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendor talking with Jesus. Did you catch that? They were talking with Jesus. That means they have cognitive capability. Secondly, heavenly friends. Those in heaven long for your prayer requests. Their intercession far exceeds your best friend's prayers here on earth. Sorry to say that. And thirdly, a pesky comeback. Well, Oral Roberts University has the prayer tower. TBN has a prayer department. Your home church probably has a prayer hotline. Well, guess what? Heaven has an on-demand, pure, unselfish prayer warriors known as the great cloud of witnesses. They're waiting on you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. We're currently cruising at 39,000 feet. We'll turn that seatbelt sign off for you and let you move about the cabin. Looks like we're about two hours and ten minutes from landing. Plenty of time for you to pray for vocations to the priesthood. Wouldn't it be great if everyone prayed daily for priestly vocations? Why not start today? A friendly suggestion from Guadalupe Radio Network. Welcome back to Catholic Drive Time, keeping you informed and inspired. I'm Rudy Carlos, and here are more breaking news and headlines for you. Be happy. 